Welcome to prom time. That's not the line. Welcome to Scott Slasher World. This week, I'm gonna be showing off five Freddy Krueger items that are in my collection. First up this week is this vintage, a nightmare on Elm Street talking Freddy Krueger pull string doll. Yes, this box has seen better days. Um, it's looked like this ever since I got it, and I bought this, I'm thinking 10 to 15 years ago maybe, uh, and I got it for 20 bucks. I mean, good luck finding a uh, open one for $20 nowadays. These things are highly collectible and uh, yeah, people really want these. I'd love to find a box that was in better shape so I can open this one, but these pull string dolls work very well. Um, I'm gonna pull the string and you can hear Freddy say all kinds of things. Pleasant dreams, let's see what else he says. Freddy just wants to be friends. He says a whole array of stuff and it's all in just different order. Uh, he says, welcome to Elm Street. Watch out, Freddy's back. Pleasant dreams, let's be friends. And uh, his, uh, his laugh. Man, I love, love this figure. It was one of my like most prized Freddy Krueger things just because I owned it as a kid and now I own it as an adult. Uh, yeah, the box is beat up, but uh, he's still new in box. So as soon as I do find a um, a better box, I will open this. Next up is this realistic looking Nightmare on Elm Street Freddy Krueger glove. Uh, this was put out by a company called Rubies, and uh, I've never opened this box either. Um, I really dig the way that it like displays the glove. You can really get a good look at it. It looks very realistic. Um, you know, I've owned a bunch of Freddy Krueger gloves in the past where, um, you know, like the knobs you can tell are just like plastic. But the way that this one's painted, it looks like it's really metal and uh, it's just a really nice glove put out by a company called Rubies. Next up is one of my favorite Freddy Krueger items and this is a squirt gun. This is a vintage retro 1989 squirt gun put out by everybody's favorite gaming company, LJN. This right here is so cool. It's so realistic. Um, it just it displays so well when you put it on the shelf. This is definitely one of my favorite Freddy Krueger collectibles. I love this thing. The fourth item I'm showing off this week, a lot of you have definitely seen before and it's the GameStop exclusive NECA, a Nightmare on Elm Street Freddy Krueger figure. This Freddy is designed after the NES game. You open him up and you'll see it is exactly like the Nintendo game. He doesn't have his red and green, it's now like sort of like a reddish orange or a reddish yellow coloring. I love the coloring though, it looks great. I like the way they've designed the box to look exactly like the video game. NECA did an excellent job on this one, and uh, another highly prized Nightmare on Elm Street possession. Love this collectible. Challenge Freddy Krueger in the ultimate trivia game, and if you win, we'll throw you the Halloween party of your life where you can be Freddy. Haven't you always wanted to be me? Dive into this all new ghoulish game of hide and go shriek with hundreds of hair raising questions about all the Nightmare on Elm Street films. Our grand prize winner will be the death of the party when Freddy Makeup Man David Miller comes to your house Halloween night and hands over 5,000 bucks in cash and turns you into the splitting image of everyone's favorite fiend. Aren't you just dying to look like me? Daily winners will receive a Freddy Krueger Nintendo game cartridge. So, are you ready to be Freddy? Two dollars the first minute, one dollar each additional minute. Callers under 18 get your parents' permission before you dial. I'll see you in a nightmare on Elm Street 6. The fifth Freddy Krueger item I'm gonna show off this week is this really cool Freddy bust bank. I remember when I got him that the price point was pretty good. I'm thinking that this was probably like retail around 12 bucks, if I had a guess. I don't remember right off, but I've always used him as a bust and not a bank. As you can see that the sticker where you would remove your cash, it's still on there. And uh, you would put your coins in his back there with the little hole. I always thought they did a really good job with it. I know if you look real close, the face doesn't really match up with Robert England's, but I still think they did a good job, especially with a $12 price point. I've always dug this thing. 
That's all for this week. Let me know down in the comments, what was your favorite Freddy Krueger item that I showed off this week? And before I go, help me grow this channel by giving me a like, by subscribing and hitting that bell notification so you never miss a video. Welcome to Scott Slasher World. Since it's almost Halloween, I'm gonna be showing off a bunch of Michael Myers items that are currently in my collection. And stay tuned until the end of the video because I'm gonna show some footage I took at the Pumpkin House in Canova, West Virginia. First up this week is the classic Michael Myers Movie Maniacs figure. This right here came out in 1999 from McFarlane Toys and this is series two in the line. And uh, this is the very first one I bought from series two. You could tell that I've had this since 1999 by the faded plastic, the yellowed plastic. I've had this so long and the card used to be perfect. And uh, just through the years, it's, it's, you know, it's worn out a little bit, but it's really held up to be this old of a figure. Um, the other figures that came out in this line you had were the Crow, which I never had, Psycho, which I did buy, Child's Play 2 I did have, Scream I did have, Pumpkinhead I did have, and the Bride of Chucky Deluxe box set. Uh, I never owned that box set, but it, I always wanted it. But these things, when they were coming out, I was like at Spencer's almost every day, like, you know, waiting for them to go on sale. This one right here I bought straight out because I remember this is the first one that I bought from this Series 2. Um, for series 1, I know I bought the Freddy and the Jason. And I can't remember what else was in that series. Um, I may have had a few more. But when these were coming out, these were the thing to get if you were a horror fan. Because really, they didn't make anything in the early 90s that was like horror related. They made some stuff in the 80s. But in the very early 90s, there was just, a, 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 there wasn't enough stuff coming out. Nowadays, you can find all kinds of cool stuff. But this right here, this was the grail back then. And today, this is a really pricey figure. Next up are some Halloween comic books that were coming out in the early 2000s. These comic books were made by Chaos Comics, which I loved Chaos Comics. Loved the stuff they are putting out. Uh, this one, this is Halloween issue one. It, gl it glows in the dark. I think I ordered this online back in 2000. Um, this is a really rare one nowadays. Uh, here's issue two. And here's issue three. I know this one came out in like 2001. Um, really great artwork. I'm just going to show you. Oh, I like the, the back. They had like, you could buy Michael Myers stuff. Um, let me find a cool artwork piece here. Let me see if I can find Michael. Um, here's like he, killing his sister when he was a kid. Look at that. Let's see here. Here's, let's throw some issue number three. Here's Michael stalking his victims. But these comic books were very rare. They didn't come out monthly. If I recall, it was almost like yearly. Like it felt like I was waiting like a year for each issue. These may have been like every six to eight months. I feel like there was like a delay on these. Now I could be wrong. This is just if memory serves me correctly. But I even remember going to a comic book store and I had issues one and two, three, was delayed and I was like, you, did you uh, guys, have y'all got the Halloween 3 comic book that's coming out? Um, I've got the first two and the guy looks at me straight in the face and is like, there's never been a Halloween comic. Little did he know I owned one and two. I said, no, I own part one and two. And he's like, I don't know. They never made a Halloween comic. Cause you know, comic book guys, they know it all. But very cool to own these. Super, super rare nowadays. Um, I'm just looking on the back of this one and it was limited to 6,666 copies worldwide. And this is the premium glow in the dark edition. Next up is this blood splattered Michael Myers from Halloween 2. Uh, this was put out by uh, Super 7 and uh, this is a more recent figure. Uh, this is in pristine condition. It doesn't even have the hole punched. Um, I love this figure. Halloween 2 is one of my favorite sequels. I visit it every Halloween, and uh, once I saw this, I had to pick it up. 
And speaking of Halloween 2, here's another Halloween 2 figure. This one was put out by NECA, and it's their Toonie Terrors line. They also put out a bloody Michael Myers. It's very similar to the reaction figure that I had where he's bleeding from his eyes. Uh, but I saw this one and had to pick it up. Uh, look at the, the back. The back is really cute. It's got a, um, it's basically a place that's a backdrop, a bonus backdrop where you can cut it out and then put Michael in front of it. Basically a playset. Um, I love it. Comes with uh, his traditional knife and jack-o'-lantern. Uh, I love the like Scooby-Doo sort of like feel that the Toonie Terrors gives. Um, it's like a, basically it's like a Scooby-Doo figure. I love these. Uh, very, very cool. Next up is another Michael Myers figure from NECA. This one is the uh, Halloween 2018 figure. It's part of their Real Toys line. This one you can open it up and here is Michael in all his glory. Uh, this is uh, the one that's a sequel to Halloween 2. This is a different timeline. I love this figure. Um, it also comes with the um, light up flickering pumpkin it says here. As you can see the pumpkin, I've never opened this up, but it, it'll actually light up and flicker, which is a really, really cool feature to have. Uh, love these figures from NECA. I also picked up the Halloween Kills NECA figure. This is also a part of the Real Toys line, and this came out in 2021. You open them up just like the other one, and you can see Michael with all his accessories. I love this. Such a, such a cool figure. And uh, the back says, everybody's favorite line from the movie, evil dies tonight. Evil dies tonight! Evil dies tonight! Evil dies tonight! That's all for this week in front of the camera. Uh, stay tuned until the end of the video because I'm gonna show off that footage that I shot at the pumpkin house. Uh, before I go, I'm gonna try these uh, Halloween Skittles. These are called Shriekers. Pretty cool. Um, they're supposed to be a uh, like a sour like Skittle. So I'm gonna try these out and let's. I'll give you a taste test and see what they taste like. Oh look, they're really cool looking. I don't know. If, let me see if I can hold this up to the camera. Very Halloween themed candy. Drop one. Uh, let's let's just test a whole bunch out and see if they're that sour. At first, they're kind of sweet. Mm. Oh, hold on. Oh, no. Oh, God. Oh, not again. Welcome to Scott Slasher World. This week, I'm going to be showing off five unique, weird Friday the 13th Jason Voorhees items that are in my collection. First up this week is the Cinema of Fear Friday the 13th Jason Voorhees figure. Uh, this was made by Mezco Toys, and this is a, a figure from 2007. Um, I think I played about $23 for this when it came out. 
I've always loved this figure. It just looks so cool. I've never uh, opened the box though. Uh, I just kind of thought the box was cool. He looks so good in here, the way he's packaged. Look how cool that side is. Um, inside the box comes with uh, a severed head. And he's got a few of his toys. Uh, we, we've got uh, a few of his weapons there. We have an axe, if you can see it. And then there's also a machete inside. And I love the way Jason looks in this. Such a cool Jason Voorhees figure. Next up this week, and this is a weird one. This is a Friday the 13th Jason Voorhees Solar Bobbler. It's a bobbler head Jason. This one, this came out and this was at Big Lots. Uh, it was eight bucks. Um, and I never, I've never opened this one either. Um, but yeah, I got this at Big Lots and it came also, there was like a Freddy Krueger one uh, that I do have in my collection. I bought them both. Um, and I think this probably came out, let's see if it's got a date here. You know, I'm not, I'm not sure when this one came out. I do love the packaging, look how cool that is. Um, the back says, uh, still I don't see a date. I don't remember when this came out. Um, don't see a date right, like when I'm glancing at the back, but what a cool little bobblehead. That's a cool bobblehead right there. Solar powered Friday the 13th, Jason Voorhees. Next up this week, and this is a strange one. This is a very cutesy keychain Jason Voorhees. You know, I don't even remember when this came out. It doesn't have the date on the back of his head. Uh, I think it would. Um, I don't know, I just like this. I think, I can't remember. You know, it might have been like one of those like uh, bubble packs, like you don't know. Uh, it's like a blind bag, you don't even know like what it is. Cause I have a few of these, like I have like Michael Myers, uh, maybe another, I can't remember. But I always like these little things. I know they're weird. It's just weird to make a cutesy Jason Voorhees, you know, because he's a uh, machete wielding maniac. I don't know, it's crazy. But love having him in the collection. Next up this week is this really cool posable horror headliner from 2000. Um, I did open this one. Um, you know, I have the Freddy, they made a Freddy and they also made a Leatherface. I believe that's all. Um, I've got all three, I opened all three. Um, I can't even remember what the packaging was like. I, I feel like it was like red, but I could be totally wrong. I need to look that up. I always liked the way uh, these little guys looked. I love his design. Look how crazy he looks. Um, yeah, he's missing an eyeball there. Missing all kinds of stuff. His clothing has begun to rot. This basically looks like um, part seven. I mean, well, no, I mean, it's like part seven, but it's also like Jason goes to hell. And uh, I don't know, it's like they put part seven and Jason goes to hell and kind of combined them. Cause this, you know, this whole head right here is from Jason goes to hell. But some of like the, this and like this rotting away, you know, when he comes out of the lake at the beginning of part seven, but I always loved the way this little guy looked. And the last thing I want to show off this week is this really cool Friday the 13th Part 7, the New Blood standee. Um, the director of the Pork Chop series, uh, my buddy Eamon Hardeman bought this for me. I think it was at Days of the Dead that he got this. It was like Horror Hound or Days of the Dead. It was one of those um, horror conventions. Um, but I absolutely loved it. I love this thing. Um, and I wanted to show this off as one of my five items. Um, and I mentioned earlier, the last thing I showed off was the uh, horror headliner figure. And I was saying, I thought the package was, was red. Well, when I looked at the wall, I have a bunch of like way more rare Friday 13 stuff that, that I may have shown, you know, I didn't show off this time. And one of the items was that still in the package. So I have two of those. I have one out of the package and one in the package. Anyways, love, love, love this standee. And it's just a really good addition to my Friday the 13th, Jason Voorhees collection. Uh, what item did you like best? Uh, let me know by leaving me a comment. And if you will, help me grow the channel by uh, liking, by subscribing, and hitting that bell notification so you never miss a video. Welcome to Scott Slasher World. This week, I'm gonna be showing off five full moon comic books that I picked up from 
third floor comics and collectibles in Nitro, West Virginia. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna show off a few of my uh, Full Moon Blu-rays and DVDs. First up this week is the number three issue of Puppet Master. Uh, I did not own this one, so I had to pick it up. I'm trying to complete these. Uh, these came out in like the, the early 90s. This one was 1991. Um, it's got a really cool uh, The Pit and the Pendulum ad on the back. Also has an ad for my favorite Puppet Master movie. You got Puppet Master 2 there. Really cool uh, grab for me. I, I want to complete this collection and I'm getting close now. I got to find the other ones and see which issues from this series I'm missing, but a very, very nice find. I also picked up two issues of Subspecies 2. Um, just the same comic book, but alternate covers. I like both covers, so I figured I might as well pick up both of these and add them to the collection. Uh, these are printed by Action Lab Comics, and this one came out in 2018. Uh, really, really cool artwork in here, and uh, I'm so glad that uh, Full Moon, they still have comic books coming out. I'm glad Action Lab got the rights to make these. Um, as to my knowledge, I think they're still making them, but I could be wrong on that. Um, I know that the uh, the publisher in here, Sean Gabber, and I met him at um, Scarefest one year and ended up buying uh, the Puppet Master a graphic novel he was selling. He uh, and a bunch of other people are making these and I love them. Awesome artwork and uh, I haven't read this one just yet but the next two I'm going to show off I have read and they're amazing. And the next two pickups are Ginger Dead Man number two and number three. Really really fun issues. I read both of these last night when I got in. I'll show you some art from here. Uh, let me just flip through here. There are, there's some nudity in these, so I will make sure that there is no nudity. Oh, here's a really good shot of the ginger dead man attacking uh, a victim. Very, very cool. Love the cover. Look how pretty these things are. I, I love these. Uh, maybe one more little piece of art. Let's see what else we got. Yeah, let's see. Here's a really cool page. Here's where... Uh, Here's the old ginger dead man himself. Since I showed off these comic books, let's show off some DVD and Blu-ray Full Moon films. All right, I just picked out a few of the Full Moon films. Now, I know the Blu-rays you've probably seen if you watch my videos. I showed all my Blu-rays off. So you've probably seen these, but since I got new Puppet Master and Subspecies comics, we can show off the Puppet Master and Subspecies that I own on Blu-ray. Now, I do own way more on VHS and DVD, but here is just some of them. So we have, let's get them in order here. We've got Puppet Master number one. Definitely my, uh, it's probably my second favorite Puppet Master movie. Puppet Master two, my favorite Puppet Master movie. We've got Puppet Master number Three, which is a lot of the Puppet Master fans' favorite. People love Puppet Master 3. Um, I'm a fan of two, but three is great as well. Uh, also, we have Subspecies Part 1, Subspecies Part 2, which might be my favorite in the series. I would say Part 2 is maybe my favorite, Part 1, and then Part 3. All really good subspecies movies. I also have these really cool box sets. We've got the Puppet Master box set and the Subspecies box set. Um, when these came out, these were all of the movies pretty much in the film series. Uh, the Puppet Masters had one through seven. There's a lot more Puppet Masters now. And then um, Subspecies had one through four plus Vampire Journals. They have made Subspecies 5, Blood Rise, I believe, is the title. Uh, very good film, by the way, and Ted Nicolau does all the subspecies. Subspecies is awesome. You should definitely watch Subspecies. Um, if you're a fan of the Puppet Master movies, or at least the first three, you definitely need parts four and five. I love it. Part four I really, really like. Four is awesome. And they filmed five um, right after four. So, like, after they were filming four, they just continued filming part five it was just released a year later and you it, it, it's very much part five is very much just 
part four, part two. And then you got, uh, got Curse of Puppet Master in here, and you also have Retro Puppet Master. Really cool box that to own. And since I picked up two new Ginger Dead Man comic books, I figured I'd show off my Ginger Dead Man DVD collection. Now, I don't own them all, but I do own Ginger Dead Man Part 1, starring Gary Busey. Uh, Ginger Dead Man Part 2, Passion of the Crust. Really fun comedy. And we also have Ginger Dead Man vs. Evil Bong. And speaking of Evil Bong, not only do I own an Evil Bong t-shirt, but I do have a few of the movies on DVD. We have Evil Bong Part 1, starring Tommy Chong. Uh, this one's really fun. It's got a lot of cool cameos in this one, and people that show up in like the Bong world. Um, we got uh, Tim Thomerson, he was in Trancers and Dollman. Uh, you got Bill Mosley from The Devil's Rejects. Um, Robin Sidney, who's been in a ton, a ton of Full Moon stuff. She's married to Charles Band now. Also, uh, characters from the Full Moon universe show up. Characters like the Ginger Dead Man. So that's pretty cool that they, they were crossing over early. In Evil Bong, they crossed over before Ginger Dead Man versus Evil Bong. And we also have Evil Bong 2. So Evil Bong 2, King Bong. And the great thing about this movie is it's in 3D if you're stoned. I have a bunch more Full Moon movies on DVD and Blu-ray, but let's just quickly, we'll just show one more. Uh, this one is Dr. Mordred. This right here is basically Full Moon doing Doctor Strange. I think it was going to be Doctor Strange and then the rights fell through or something like that, but it's basically Jeffrey Combs playing Doctor Strange, and it's awesome. You've got to watch this one. Um, also, the uh, bad guys, Brian Thompson, you'll know him from, uh, you know, Cobra, and he was in a bunch of movies, but Brian Thompson is awesome in this as well. You've got to watch Dr. Mordred if you're a fan of Doctor Strange or Jeffrey Combs or Full Moon movies. That's all for this week. Let me know what your favorite Full Moon movie is down in the comments. And before I go, help me grow this channel by giving this video a like and by subscribing and hitting that bell notification so you never miss a video. Welcome to Scott Slasher World. This week, I want to take a trip back to the late 1990s when Spencer's Gifts were producing horror action figures. I'm talking about the R.I.P. Horror Collector series. They made nine different figures. Well, really eight, but they made two different versions of Michael Myers. They made a bloody version and a non-bloody version. And these figures were produced from 1998 to 2001. So they made a bunch in 98 a few in 99, and like two more in 2001. Today, I have three I'm gonna show off, and then I'll fill you in on the ones that I don't currently have in my collection. First up this week is The Crypt Keeper from Tales from the Crypt. This is an awesome, awesome action figure. This one is from 1998. Most of these are numbered to only 30,000 ever made. Uh, a few of these were 100,000. I know the bloody Michael Myers, they made 100,000 of those. Um, but most of the figures and all the ones that I'm showing off, they only had um, 30,000 that they created. Um, but man, I love these things. And the back, as you can see, opens. So as you open it up, it has more information. It has uh, a whole write-up about the Crypt Keeper. Uh, mine is 11,168 out of the 30,000. Um, these all do still currently talk, but they're so low because I've never changed the batteries. They've never actually been removed. Uh, these are the original ones that I did buy in the late 90s, early 2000s. As you can tell, I've every time I've moved, I had to take these with me. So there's a lot of wear and tear on the box. As you can see the little Crypt Keeper his box is a little worn. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna put this up to the microphone just to see if you can hear what he says. So let's see if this works. I have no idea what he just said. Uh, let's see, one more time. 
as you can tell, he uh, doesn't really work because the batteries are dead. Um, he's saying something, but I can't even remember uh, what he says. I think we, maybe if we open them up, uh, see the back of the box does not tell you what he says either. I can't remember how many um, things he says. I don't know if it's like one or two things. Um, I would imagine like three or four tops, uh, but it might just be one thing that he says. Um, I love the try me if you dare is of course, everybody's gonna be pushing the buttons uh, on the back of the box. It says the Crypt Keeper is the world's undisputed icon of ghoul, horror and spooktacular fun. He's hip, funny, cutting edge, and without question, the creep of all creeps. Slowly but surely, kiddies, he's become for Halloween what that jolly old fat man in the red suit is to Christmas. His first scary appearance was on the amazing pages of the classic EC comics of the 50s where he presided over chilling stories of gore and mayhem captivating an entire cult following for years and years. But it, it was as master of scaremonies of the award-winning TV series Tales from the Crypt that catapulted him into the genuine spooky superstar all you boils and ghouls have come to know and loathe. Have fun, fright friends, with this backsiding Crypt Keeper talking doll, which only goes to prove the beast is yet to come. And uh, I messed that last line up as it's have fun, fright friends, with this hack sighting instead of exciting. It's hack sighting. Uh, I just read that one wrong, but love the pictures on the back. I always love the box. One of the reasons why I never took the three that I own out of the box. Now, I'll go ahead and spoil. I did own two more that I got rid of, and I don't know why I did, but I used to own the uh, non bloody Michael Myers um, and the scream ghost face figure i sold them both at a yard sale because I, I opened them up out of the boxes so that i could play with them and then like later on i decided since they weren't in the box that i should sell those and keep the three that i did currently still have in the box don't know why i did that wish i still had them all but very cool and uh let's see what's next kitties Next up, it's Leatherface from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Beautiful figure. This Leatherface um, has a 1999 copyright, um, and it is 6,444 out of the 30,000. He still works, but you're probably not going to be able to hear him. Uh, if I recall, it's a chainsaw. Makes sense. Uh, he has an opening back as well with all kinds of cool photos from the film. Uh, a whole big description. Uh, a different font on the back, which is cool. I like that they kind of made each of these uh, unique. Uh, let's see if I can uh, hold him up and hear what he says. You can probably hear that. It is the chainsaw. You can hear him uh, rev up his chainsaw. If we open up the back, this says, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre is the horrifying classic that possesses an undying power to frighten audiences, uh, to frighten audiences again and again. Terror so strong that when the movie first opened, audiences actually walked out of the theater in a state of shock. For five young friends, a typical summer afternoon drive becomes a terrifying nightmare. After hearing reports of grave robbings, they set out to check on a family grave. One by one, they find true horror as they wander into the murderous clutches of Leatherface. And then it has facts about the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Originally, the film was titled Head Cheese and later Leatherface. It wasn't changed to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre until the movie was about to be released. Toby Hooper, the producer and director of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, was originally shooting for a PG rating for the film. The movie has been banned in Germany and the United Kingdom. The narrator at the beginning of the film is none other than John Larroquette of Night Court fame. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre is based on the story of the serial killer, Ed Gein. Leatherface actually wears three different masks in the film, the killing mask, the old lady mask, and the pretty woman mask. 
And the last figure from the R.I.P. Horror Collector Series that is currently in my collection is none other than Jason Voorhees from the Friday the 13th series. Uh, this one has a copyright of 1999. Has some cool steals. A lot of these steals actually are from Friday the 13th Part 1, which this Jason would not have appeared in. Um, as you can see, the picture here on the bottom of the box is actually uh, from Jason Goes to Hell, the final Friday. So that's, that's part nine in the series. Um, it does have a opening back too, as you can see. I can tell a bunch of these, like a bunch of these steals are from Friday the 13th. I think that's Friday the 13th, part one. Um, it's got a description on the uh, back as well. Um, let's see if this one still works. I can't remember if it works or not. I don't hear anything. Hey, there it goes. As you can tell, it's the Friday the 13th classic theme song that plays because Jason doesn't talk. Um, an awesome, awesome figure. I love this one. He looks so cool. I love his deformed head. Looks exactly like from part nine. Um, the back of the box. Um, is different font and everything too. I like the way they did this. Uh, a shorter description, but this one says, as a young boy at Camp Crystal Lake, Jason Voorhees drowned when counselors were assigned to watch over. Years later, a rash of murders occurred at uh, Crystal Lake and people came to the horrifying realization that Jason Voorhees had returned from the dead. Wearing his trademark hockey mask and brandishing a wide assortment of deadly weapons, this unstoppable killer has terrorized teenagers everywhere for more than a decade. Jason Voorhees will go down in history as the most prolific serial killer of all time. And this is from uh, 19, like I said, copyright from 1999. So at the time, he definitely was the most prolific killer. Uh, this is before all the uh, newer Halloween sequels were coming out. Um, at this time, I believe, yeah, nine Friday the 13th had already came out. So, um, you know, Freddy, Freddy vs. Jason had not came out yet, but you had Jason X didn't come out yet either, right? No, uh, Jason X would have came out late 2000s, like two, or early 2000s, like 2001, I believe. I'd have to double check that. Uh, my mind says 2001. Could be somewhere early 2000s, like 2003, but I'm thinking 2001. Uh, awesome to have and uh, like i said there are actually nine total in the on this series number four would be freddy krueger nightmare on elm street uh, number five would be uh, michael myers from halloween number six would be the bloody michael myers from halloween number seven is ghostface from scream and then like i said in 2001 they actually released two more figures they released a rocky horror figure they released frankenfurter the ninth and final figure from 2001 would have been uh, eric draven from the crow so that is all of the figures in this spencer's line so the r.i.p horror collector series had a total of i guess eight characters but nine total figures at least to my knowledge, uh, just doing a little bit of research on the web. Back in the day, they didn't really make a whole lot of horror merchandise. Now, luckily, you can find all kinds of stuff. You know, NECA is making all kinds of cool stuff. All these other companies are making all this cool stuff. But we really had, and McFarlane was a huge one. Um, when these came out, uh, I know the McFarlane line came like right about the same time, that very first wave of movie maniacs. And I was collecting all those too, and I still have all those original ones that uh, came out. Almost all of them, actually. But good to have all these in my collection, and uh, I hope everyone enjoyed this video. I hope it was a bit informative. Uh, I love these. Like I said, I don't care that the boxes are kind of worn. I love them. I do wish that, you know, maybe I should pull them out and uh, put batteries in them. But, I don't know. I don't want to separate them from their box. I hope everyone enjoyed my trip down memory lane talking about these cool 18-inch talking horror action figures from Spencer's Gifts. Let me know down in the comments what your favorite was and how many of these are currently in your collection. And, if you've not done already, please subscribe and hit that bell notification so you never miss a video.